i3 10100F. It was released in 2020 with an MSRP of $110. Nowadays, you can probably find it for half of the price, and if you're willing to go for a used one, you might even get it for as cheap as $30. Now, even though this CPU only has 4 cores and 8 threads, it is by no means weak. Its modern architecture and a boost frequency of 4.3GHz allows it to handle any modern game at 1080p resolution without a problem. But I wanna know whether or not it can run those games on the highest settings without any stutter at stable 60 plus FPS. To test our CPU, I'll be using an RTX 4060 Ti because it's the most powerful GPU that I own at the moment, and of course I would love to have something like an RTX 4080 or even a 4090 to make sure that we don't get bottlenecked by the GPU, but this is honestly all I can afford at the moment, and if anything, if this CPU is powerful enough to stay on par with a 4060 Ti, then I guess it's a win in my book. But anyhow, why don't we just head over to the benchmarks and see what this CPU is capable of. Let's begin with CS2. We are running this game on the highest settings at 1080p resolution. After playing this deathmatch for 10 minutes straight, we averaged around 120 FPS. The gameplay was smooth and there were no stutters to be seen whatsoever. I also tried lowering the graphics in the hopes of getting a bit more FPS, but it seems that we are CPU limited and lowering the graphics won't do us a whole lot in this game. Doom Eternal Here I was expecting a lot of FPS, but never would I ever thought that I would be getting over 200 FPS on the highest settings. When there was nothing going on, it even went as high as 300, but on average, especially in fights, we got around 220 FPS. I hope this proves just how powerful this i3 processor is. In a world where you can get this much performance for just $30, you should really take advantage of it, hence why I've been building so many systems on this very CPU. Forza Horizon 5 we are running this game on the extreme preset with ray tracing set to disabled, and I gotta say, the game is running amazing. In this built-in benchmark, we averaged around 95 FPS. This CPU has managed to deliver 60 plus FPS in all of the games that we've thrown at it so far, but I wonder just how well it's gonna perform in other games that are a bit more demanding on this CPU. Atomic Heart same as every other game, we are running it on the highest possible settings. Initially, on the boat scene I was getting around 90 FPS and we were bottlenecked by the GPU, which is understandable because there was nothing to load there and the area was mainly stressing the GPU. Once we moved over to the land, the results started making a bit more sense. Now while we still maintained 80-ish FPS most of the time, in areas where there were too many NPCs and the CPU had to work way harder, the FPS dropped to mid-60s, which is to be expected. But regardless of how hard I tried to stress the CPU, the FPS never went below 60. And after running around for about 10 minutes, we averaged a solid 100 FPS. Halo Infinite here I was a bit worried at the start because this is a GPU intensive game and it doesn't stress the CPU all that much, and since we have a mere 4060 Ti in here, I thought that we would struggle to show the full potential of this CPU. But as we see, RTX 4060 Ti is barely powerful enough to show us just how well the CPU handles the game. Now while we are still bottlenecked by the GPU in some areas of the game, I'm mostly interested in the CPU's performance in fights where a bunch of enemies are shooting at us and a lot of things are being loaded at the same time. After fighting with the enemies for a few minutes, I noticed that the FPS was still not going below 90. If anything, I think it even went up. Overall, we averaged around 96 FPS in this game. Red Dead Redemption 2 here I simply chose the highest preset and loaded the built-in benchmark. Ideally, you wanna test every single game through the actual gameplay, but I don't really play this game at all, so we're just gonna use the built-in benchmark to test the performance of this CPU. And I gotta say, I was not expecting a clean 70 plus FPS in this crowded area. 
I was honestly prepared to see the FPS go below 60, but I guess I should've put a bit more faith into this i3 processor because the numbers aren't lying and we are indeed getting 90 FPS in this game on the highest settings. Sons of the Forest is another game where I was pretty certain that we weren't gonna get 60 plus FPS, but to my surprise, we managed to get around 70 FPS on average on the highest settings. I was honestly walking around for a good while because I just couldn't believe how well the CPU was handling the game. And even though Sons of the Forest is known for having frequent stutters, I just couldn't replicate any of that on this CPU. The last game for today's benchmarks will be Cyberpunk. As we all know, Cyberpunk is still one of the most demanding games to date. So if this i3 can run it at 60 plus FPS on the highest settings, I can say with confidence that it'll play pretty much anything on any settings. While I was driving around through the city for a good 20 minutes, I noticed that some areas were unreasonably demanding on the CPU. In these specific areas, and we're gonna see it on the screen, the FPS went as low as 39, but for the most part, it stayed around mid-60s. And let's get one thing straight, I didn't even see a single stutter from this CPU in these 20 minutes. Sometimes the FPS even went into high 80s, especially when the CPU didn't have to work as hard, but in the end we achieved a solid 64 FPS on average. Overall, I gotta say that this CPU exceeded all of my expectations. It is probably one of the best processors that you can get right now for under $30. And in case you wanna go for an AMD processor instead, take a look at the Ryzen 5 1600, which has roughly the same performance as this i3 processor, and if anything, AM4 platform has a much bigger upgradability than LGA 1200, so if you ever have to choose between these two processors, I think you'll be better off going for the Ryzen 5 1600 instead. By the way, I will be revisiting that CPU in the nearest future because I wanna see just how much better or worse this i3 1900F is in comparison to Ryzen 5 1600. On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.